ba 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 I feel like there should be like this emotional big build up because I've been wanting to do a dragon room for so long. Ba 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 ba! But I know we don't have time for that. Clearly, I am excited about this design. It's the biggest room we've ever designed. It's the most ambitious room we've ever designed. The whole idea is I want people to get to this moment and just, what the hell? Mike, can you give me some special effects in this? It is 80 feet long, yep. 18 feet tall and so around 30 feet wide. Did you do really cool graphics for all that? I hope you did. So what we're gonna talk about today is how we're taking this big, vast, beautiful design that's key to the story and turn it into something terrifying. First thing I need to do in a big, beautiful room like this is establish awe. Creating awe is something we try to do with a lot of our designs, whether it's the facade at Hell's Gate or the Maniac Ward in Statesville. Creating that sense of awe is pretty important in our designs when you're trying to create this other world. I need the audience to ask, what is back there? How big is this? But even 67 feet, which is huge, should look like 300 feet. The main thrust of the vision of this design is deep vistas, so deep views. If my patron walks in and they feel the space is bigger than they are, they feel smaller. And it's so much easier to scare them when they feel insignificant. Room within a room. Typical flambo design. So we make a big room and then we put small rooms inside those rooms. We look into other rooms that go into smaller rooms inside those rooms. You can't just let people go walking around in this big wide open space that all look like the happy inflatable tube arm guys and they'd be relaxed. You've got the big timbers that you're going through, but we're gonna use uh, boards and cage on the sides of it to protect you while you're in the tunnel. But it allows us to create a little bit of like a slant hall scare right here for actors. It's gonna kind of twist you a little bit and put you in a vulnerable position, make them go through tight, uncomfortable spaces that they might not want to touch the things around them. Multiple sight lines. I need multiple sight lines for their heads to always be on a swivel. If I line up a stalagmite with a stalagmite, from there, it's gonna look like it's one thing. You're trying to look up and see that dragon inside of this A-frame, but they're always looking for where the bad guy is. Then they're never prepared for where the bad guy is coming. <laughs> Textures. I just need you to ask, what is that? Wonder what that is. Wonder what that feels like. You won't be able to tell she's a dragon, you'll just see this. This just feels weird. Like if I can change textures, I got you on a, on a line. On that line, you ask questions, your imagination starts participating. Once the imagination starts writing the script, boom! <laughs> Tip the chin. This is the most vulnerable spot. I mean, just tap it. It's an awful experience to just tap your own neck. So, subconsciously, we protect the neck. We go in real tight, real small, as small as we can. If I can get my customer to break out of this little comfort zone and start wondering, what the hell is that? Now I got a scare. So as I'm tipping up my chin and I've got Dragon Queen attacking from above, it sets you up perfectly for that nice little scare. Bringing your attention up to another dragon coming from a different area, it sets up the monk. Come around the corner and it's big again. You gotta tip that chin to the Dragon Queen, the beautiful dragon right there, and then attack from below. Empower the actor. Every one of these things is to do the only thing that matters, is empower the actor. This is an amazing playground for an actor. It might look like a dragon cave, but it's just a playground for an actor. So this is anatomy of a scare in the dragon caves. Punch him right out the exit. 